Welcome to Nscale Wonderland, everyone. Thanks for watching. Today I'm going to show you how to install the Kado LED Interior Lighting Kit version 2. And this can be used for any number of the Nscale Kado passenger trains from the Japanese locomotives and uh, high speed trains to the American stuff to any of the uh, European stuff as well. My example today is on a Japanese train, a Shinkansen Nozomi, the N700A. Beautiful model, um, but I've also done this on the Shinkansen Japanese Hayabusa high-speed train, and also on um, a number of other European trains, the TGV, uh, the ICE-4, and some other ones. So let's get started. First thing you're going to need is the... Kato kit. They come in a single package or a six each package. My example here, I've got eight coaches, so I have a single six pack and two individual packs. You want to pop off the shell of the coach. I usually use a couple small screwdrivers and your fingernails to just slightly pop them off. Uh, be careful not to damage any of the plastic, but they usually come off without too much problem. From there, you want to uh, orient the coach so you can see the two slots where the pickups are going to be installed. And what I usually do on the pickups, the, the two tiny metal pieces, is I bend a small downward arc in, a, in them, and I also bend out the vertical piece just a little bit from 90 degrees out. And what that does is help it be more pressed up against the contacts of both the bogey and on the lighting bar when you install it. From there, you want to install them and slide them into the, the coach. They go in really easily, push them all the way in. Then you're going to want to assemble the actual lighting elements. And what I mean by that is to install the warm lighting filter over the existing LED. I have not found a single condition where I don't use those. The lights are so bright and such a cool blue color or white color that the warm filter is the only way to go to make them look more realistic. And in fact, even with the warm filter, they're still a little bit on the, the bright, cool side. So I highly recommend you put those in on basically everything. In order to do that, you'll pop off the black um, cover. You'll then install the little orange filter and then pop the black cover back in place. I also bend out the tabs, the metal tabs, just a little bit, as you can see from the picture, which again help push them up against the contacts to make sure I've good, got good contact. From there, you want to slide it into the coach. You might need to use some tweezers to spread those bent pickups back a little bit in order to make sure they fit in. And then the next part, which is really the main reason why I wrote this video, is how do you put the reflective piece into the, into the coach? And basically what Kato tells you to do in the instructions is to snap it into the underside of the shell. The problem with this is they usually don't fit in there very well. They're loose or can become loose. Uh, they never fit quite right. And the worst part is when you put them back onto the train, there leaves a little bit of gap between the light bar and the actual LED. That creates a hot spot. And when you're looking at the side of the train when it's all closed up, it looks weird because there's this one real bright area. And the only way to get around that is to make sure that that light bar is pressed up nice and tight to the actual LED element. And the way to properly do that is to basically install the light bar on top of the seats. And what I do in order to do this is I use some things called glue dots, which are little adhesive dots. You can buy a roll of this for maybe five or six bucks at a Michael's or a Joann's Fabrics. And it says it's permanent, but it's not. It's kind of like a tacky substance that is a, works perfect to hold these things in place for no rattling, um, and, and it's super strong as well. 
So what I do is uh, take a tiny little piece of this stuff and I put it on the verticals within the seating area that will support the lighting bar. I then push that lighting bar down into place, again, making sure it's up nice and tight to the LED element so there's no gap. You want to install these just as it's shown in the instructions. So you want to make sure the printed side is on top and that the fanned portion of the light bar is away or the opposite side of the LED light. That's to basically spread the light so you get a uniform distribution of light even at the far end of the coach. It actually works pretty good. Last thing you need to do is go into the underside of the shell and you need to just do a little fine tune exacto knife work to get rid of those tabs that they put in there in order to support the lighting bar. And the reason you want to do this is because it's a little too tight. It doesn't quite push on correctly with these things in place. So I just cut them out. Sounds crazy. Sounds like it takes a lot of effort. It's really not that big a deal. Again, it makes a far superior product when you're done. So go in there with a small X-Acto knife and just basically shave off a little bit of each of these tabs. You don't want to completely cut them out because they do hold in the window glass or plastic piece that represents the windows on a, on a number of coaches. So again, you're just cutting out a little triangle piece of it just so when you put the, the coach cover back on the shell, it doesn't push it doesn't interfere in any way so once that's done snap the thing back on um, again it's it's good to to test the light before you put the final um, shell back on put it on your programming track turn the power on make sure it's good make sure your contacts are all good then pop the shell back on and you're uh, ready to rock and roll thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this see you next time